Dennis Gates in Missouri get a big man, but probably not the big guy that any Missouri fans were expecting. However, I do think there's more to this young man's game than meets the eye. So let's talk about all this and more basketball recruiting right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And you know what? I want to get started today with Jesus Carolero, the most recent signing by Missouri. He came through the transfer portal from Campbell, played actually four years at Campbell, an unusual sight there to see somebody actually playing four years at one university these days. And I think a lot of Missouri fans, myself included, were a little bit underwhelmed by this commitment at first glance. Especially statistically, you think, okay, when Missouri was looking at Jamarian Sharp, a seven foot five cat from Western Kentucky who was statistically the best shot blocker in the country last season, well, Chris Beard and Ole Miss, it was too much for Jamarian Sharp to resist, apparently, though it does remain to be, it does remain a question. To me, at least, how much Missouri was truly into Jamarian Sharp this time around. Because it does lead me to wonder, does Sharp actually fit what Missouri and Gates are trying to accomplish? As Gates has explicitly said in the last couple weeks, he's looking for a specific type of player. A guy, a big man who has some skills. A guy who is willing to shoot three-pointers. And to that point, to the three-pointer argument and, and part of this equation. Well, Jesus Carolero, not a great three point shooter. And it's six foot eight, 230 pounds. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more in that part of his game. And just on paper, I can understand why people are a little bit underwhelmed by Carolero's commitment. His offensive game is frankly inefficient, at least when it comes to his part of scoring the basketball. But then you look a little bit closer and you remember, oh, a lot of these same fans have been complaining a lot this offseason. Gosh darn it, why didn't Missouri get more rebounds last season? Hey, fair enough. Certainly rebounding was a weakness for this Missouri squad. And on paper right now, it could be a problem for next year's Missouri basketball team as well. But guess what? Despite being just only 6'8", 220, 230 pounds, and I say only compared to Jamarian Sharp and also Caden Shedrick, who to me was much more of a disappointment, missing out on the, the Virginia transfer who ended up at Texas. Missing out on him was a much bigger disappointment to Jamarian Sharp. I just felt like he was a better fit than Sharp, me personally. But but back to Jesus Carlero. He's a really good rebounder, statistically, despite not being the biggest guy on the planet. Now, you might question that saying, well, easier to rebound at Campbell than it is in the SEC. Hey, fair enough, but I actually think that particular skill is going to translate pretty well. By the way, just as an aside here, Campbell, or excuse me, Jesus Carlero, who went to Campbell, Originally from Spain, actually spent a year at Link Academy in Branson, Missouri, which has become a bit of a basketball sort of prep factory here in recent years. But not only can Carlero rebound the ball without question, to me, his most interesting skill set is his passing and his ball handling. Yes, that's two skill sets. But for a guy his size, oh, maybe statistically on paper, he's not the most impressive guy at least in terms of shooting, offensive efficiency, but 
my goodness, he can certainly get other people involved because not only can Carlero rebound the ball, he can dribble it up court without an outlet pass. He can bring that thing up by himself just fine. He's a really, really interesting passer. You can just see this. Go online, put it into your Google machine right now. Google Jesus Carlero, his highlights against Duke from 2021. And you're going to see him play against Paolo Bancaro, and you're going to see the good and the bad. That's what I liked of this highlights. It's really the highlights and the lowlights. You'll see him make a really nice move to get about an eight-foot floater that he airballs at one point. But you're also going to see him actually knock down a couple three-pointers, make some really impressive passes, and again, a pretty solid shot blocker statistically too, maybe more so than you might expect. The steals are there. All of this makes me think that this is a guy who plays the game with a lot of instincts and anticipation. Now, again, I wish that his shooting was better at 25, 27% for most of his career from three-point range, somewhere in that range, only 60%, a little over from the free throw line. So if the shooting were a little bit better, if Dennis Gates can just get this guy in the gym all summer, get him up to, say, 33%, from the three-point line, suddenly now you have to take him even more seriously out there. Now the spacing is there, which is something that Dennis Gates and, and myself, by the way, I'm a big believer in spacing when it comes to offensive basketball as well. But my point is, I think this guy fits what Missouri's trying to do a lot better than you might think. I'm just telling you, watch him play basketball for a while and you'll be a lot less disappointed. Also, defensively, I, I just think the guy can move a little bit, too, considering Missouri switches just about every high ball screen that there is. Well, guess what? If you're going to be a big guy, you're going to have to hang in there for at least 5, 10 seconds occasionally against a guard at the end of the shot clock at the very least. It seems like Carl Aero has that kind of skill set. So a lot of reasons to believe that this is a good fit for Missouri. On the negative side, though, I will say, and this is really every bit, if not more, of a concern than his relative lack of offensive efficiency with his scoring game, he missed a lot of time at Campbell. Last season, he only played four games because of a wrist injury his senior year. Well, his junior and freshman campaigns missed a handful of games there as well, also missed double-digit games his sophomore season, only playing in 16 total games that season. So his durability, to me, is a real concern, a legitimate concern. He's never played a full slate of games at Campbell. But Missouri not counting on him to exactly maybe take as big of a role in as much of the offense as he did there. An interesting piece, I think, a guy with a lot of experience. We know Dennis Gates. Likes to add experience if he can. And we've seen before him take guys, just last year, take guys from a sort of mid-major level up to the high-major level, and it worked. So I really think that Dennis Gates and Charlton Young deserve the benefit of the doubt here. And frankly, a lot of Missouri fans, I'm starting to get frustrated that they aren't showing more faith with this coaching staff at this point. <laughs> And you know what? I want to explain further why I think some Missouri fans are quite a bit misguided in their criticism of Dennis Gates. However, I do think there's starting there's there is a legitimate concern out there if you're a Missouri basketball fan that's starting to creep in just just a tiny bit for me. We're not talking DEFCON 1 or anything like that, but my eyebrows are just a tiny bit raised and it comes down to name image and likeness so let's talk about all that let's talk about Matthew Cleveland Jimmy Bell and all the possibilities for the transfer portal coming up but first I want to tell you that you need to make a fast break to fan duel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars that's one thousand one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win, and I don't know about you all, I'm loving the NBA playoffs right now. I got to be honest, people are thinking the Warriors are the favorites right now. I'm not so sure about that. I still like the Denver Nuggets to come out of the West. But regardless, 
There's great promotions at FanDuel every day. Even if you're not into the NBA, of course, there's a million different things to bet on. It's all safe and secure, and you get paid instantly. No place to bet that's better on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Again, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat First bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And for you everydayers coming up later this week, I want to talk about Des Moines Hodge and his chances at the NBA. But you know what? Nick Honor will be coming back next season. Speaking of guys on the roster last season. He made that official on social media yesterday. But on the bad side, well, some bad news perhaps, at least to some people, Jamarian Sharp, as I mentioned before, to Ole Miss. And that triggered a lot of people's worries online, I noticed, at least on the message boards that, gosh darn it, Missouri is just not going to be able to rebound once again. And Oh, oh, woe is us, I guess. I This idea that, sure, well, Missouri had a great year last season, but damn it, we could have been even better with better rebounding. Well, yes, in a vacuum, no kidding. If Missouri would have done literally all the same things and yet just been a better rebounding team, then yes, Missouri would have been better. That's not really how it works, though, because... Life is not really about solutions, it's about trade-offs. And don't get me wrong, I wish Missouri would have blocked off better as a team and just better been better at team rebounding at times last season. I think that's certainly something they can clean up this coming year. I think blocking off in general the last few seasons of college basketball just seems like that's become a bit of a lost of a lost art. But again, back to the idea of there are trade-offs, not solutions in life and in basketball. It's not as though you can just replace Noah Carter, for instance, with Jamarian Sharp and only gain rebounding. Because there is a trade-off there. Something is lost when you put in Jamarian Sharp. Because obviously he's not nearly as good of a weapon as Noah Carter. You don't have to pay attention to him at the three-point line. He's not nearly as versatile offensively or even defensively in some ways. Although, let's be honest, overall, Jamarian Sharp, a much better player, I would say, than Noah Carter. Again, but offensively, I I don't think there's any comparison there either. Now, perhaps you think the trade-off is worth it. Now, that's fine. If you want to make that argument, by all means, make it. Let's just not make some weird argument where somehow Jamarian Sharp is just as additive and does the same stuff offensively that Noah Carter does, and, well, we'll just be better on the other end, too. It doesn't really work that way. Also, another another script that needs to be updated, I think. I saw some people diss the Ole Miss Rebels program, you know, sort of going back to years ago when, well, Their football program suddenly out of nowhere had the number one recruiting class in the country. And I think it was pretty obvious that there was some shady shenanigans going off the field at that point. But again, in 2023, if you're going to go, oh, Ole Miss money, well, that's why they got Jamarian Sharp. Okay, is that supposed to be a diss? Because this is the game now. Name, image, and likeness, that's part of the deal. And honestly, I'm not worried about Dennis Gates' ability to recruit whatsoever. When it comes to him missing on, whether it's Jamarian Sharp or Caden Shedrick or whoever you're worried about him missing on, I'm not worried about his ability or C.Y. Young's ability whatsoever. However, I'm starting to get a tiny bit concerned about name, image, and likeness. Where does Missouri in our program really stand in the name, image, and likeness landscape. Because it's not really just about whether you get this player or that player. Because Matthew Cleveland, for instance, the Florida State player who entered the transfer portal, has apparently, by all accounts, a great and close relationship with especially C.Y. Young, but probably Dennis Gates to some extent, too. So if that's what it all came down to, I think that Missouri would probably land the kid. But 
the University of Miami, by all accounts, that basketball program, there's somebody behind the scenes there who's got a lot of money to throw around, and he's willing to do it. So if it comes down to money, it may well be that Matthew Cleveland stays a little bit closer to home and decides to secure a nice bag of money for himself. And who could really blame him? I couldn't be mad at him or argue against that whatsoever. What, what makes me concerned is if Missouri is really behind the – if they're behind the curve a little bit in terms of NIL, well, does Dennis Gates start to get a little frustrated? That's where I'd be worried because if I'm Dennis Gates, I'm telling myself, hey, in the old world – and this is actually what I'm saying. I think in the old world, the pre-name, image, and likeness world, I think Dennis Gates could have recruited to Missouri – just fine. I think he will recruit well to Missouri. However, does he wonder about needing a new place perhaps in this new world at some point? Again, I'm not saying right now. A year or two, three, four years down the road, if it continues to be a world where Missouri is being outbid for players in the transfer portal, well, that's a new world and that's something that the Tigers and our fans are going to have to contend with. Quite frankly, As all of you know, I'm a relatively prominent Mizzou fan. Some of you know who I am, even though we haven't met before. I've been a multi-decade season ticket holder with my family. And I've got a couple nickels to rub together. I'm not going to lie to you all, but I don't even know. My point is, where do I donate? How? Which which collective am I supposed supposed to give money to? I, I, I literally don't even know which, like, which website am I supposed to go to? Whose PayPal am I supposed to to look up? I don't know. It just seems weird how nebulous and unclear this whole thing is, even though we're essentially in season two going on maybe season three of this whole thing. And it also, I think, maybe a lot of hesitation on some people's cases is it still seems that a lot of this stuff is below the board despite being legal because, as everybody knows, NIL is being used as a recruiting tool despite the fact that it's not supposed to be well clearly it is and that's an open secret at this point so as an alum as somebody who would love to be a booster and help this team win more basketball games it's still unclear to me how exactly I'm supposed to do to that how exactly I'm supposed to go about that excuse me so Missouri Time to get on the ball because it's not as though the University of Miami, for instance, has a long history of being better at basketball than Missouri. So we got to get our stuff together when it comes to NIL or else, frankly, risk losing a great coach down the road. And by the way, when I was doing my scouting of Jesus Carolero, it happens to be that one of his prominent teammates at Campbell the past few seasons is Ricky Clemens. Could it be that it's that? It Could it? Well, let's, let's find out about all that and talk about the Tigers in the NFL draft this past weekend. Coming up right after this. All right, so I might need some help from my listeners here. Ricky Clemens. Is it Ricky Clemens Jr.? Is this Ricky Clemens' son who played for Campbell? the past four seasons it kind of seems like it might be he's from Rollsville North Carolina I think he was born in Raleigh I believe that's where well the Missouri Ricky Clemens was from that area and indeed on the on on Campbell's website lists his father as Ricky Clemens son of Ricky and Cli- and Chris Clemens has one sibling Christian Clemens well I still haven't been able to confirm whether that's actually Ricky Clemens, the guy who played at Missouri or not. So I got to be honest, I'm really curious. Can y'all help me out with this one? Did Ricky Clemens have a son at a relatively young age there? And now that kid came up to be a pretty darn good college basketball player in his own right. It would be interesting. I don't know. He was born on 113-2000. So He'd be about 23 years old. Again, that would make Ricky Clemens a fairly young father, but certainly not impossible. Just curious if y'all could help me do some detective work with that one. But you know what? When it comes to the NFL draft, congratulations to Isaiah McGuire, drafted in the fourth round 
by the Cleveland Browns. As a Chiefs fan, I would have been happy to see Isaiah on board with our roster. Honestly, you can always use another pass rusher. That's for darn sure. Of course, the Chiefs took a Kansas State defensive end in the first round, so not a huge shock that they'd pass there. But I just wish Isaiah would have went to a franchise that has a little bit better idea of what it's doing than the Browns. But oh well, what can you do? Now, as far as speaking of the Kansas City Chiefs, they did sign a couple of former Tigers as undrafted free agents. Martez Manuel, the safety. Jake Hoffman, the long snapper. Also, DJ Coleman signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars as an undrafted free agent as well. So obviously good luck to all of those former true sons. And you know what? Thanks to all of you true sons and daughters for listening today. And once again, help me out with this Ricky Clemens mystery. Surely I'm on the right track here, but I want to make sure I'm right. So let's just make sure that this isn't some huge coincidence here. But as always, join me next time right here on Locked on Mizzou.